Welcome to the first episode in a Legendarium series about ancient Iberia. In part one, Builders of the Stone Tombs, we will talk about the earliest civilizations to flourish in the Iberian Peninsula. Over the centuries, the Iberian Peninsula became a melting pot of diverse cultures, seeing numerous migrations and many nations rising and falling in its fertile soil. Being the second largest peninsula in Europe, Iberia is geographically varied and great in size. As such, it saw the spread of many isolated and unique cultures, some of which endured with their uniqueness for centuries into the modern age. Human bones have been found in some Iberian caves dating back more than 750,000 years. Neanderthals likely dwelled in Iberia as well, up to 20,000 years ago when the changing climate likely led to their extinction. Within their dwellings, they had separate sleeping quarters that were cleaned of debris, and they cooked food in bags made from boiled skin upon hearths that they built themselves. They also performed funerary ceremonies for their dead, in which they covered the body with freshly picked flowers. Of course, Neanderthals died out with the end of the last ice age, opening the door for modern humans. 8,000 years ago, the first farmers crossed Asia Minor and entered Europe. They had unique funerary customs themselves. They would remove the flesh from their dead, paint their bones, and then inter them with pig or sheep skulls. From Asia Minor, these Neolithic farmers branched out to follow two different routes, one headed for Central Europe through the Danube River Valley, the other headed for the Iberian Peninsula, following a path marked by the Mediterranean coast. During the Neolithic, agriculture spread with extraordinary speed, causing fundamental changes in the lives of those who practiced it. Instead of being nomadic, farmers had to become sedentary. The small villages that hunter-gatherers founded in the richest areas became steadily larger, sometimes transforming into small cities. Archaeologists have found that the first people to settle in Iberia likely had brown eyes, dark hair, and light skin. These Neolithic people mainly lived in timber and mud houses, but sometimes used stone for building. In Catalonia, for example, Neolithic farmers built a stone structure known as the Haunted House in the province of Lieda. However, in 5000 BC, Los Miliers became the earliest named culture of the Iberian Peninsula. It likely began its history as a farming settlement located only a few miles from the Mediterranean coast, and in time the farmers built a stone necropolis to house the bones of their ancestors, which they believed had totemic powers and would protect them from evil. This civilization became as Los Miliers. It arose in the south of the peninsula, in the modern region of Andalusia. Its name derived from the major city of that culture, which flourished during the Copper Age, which spanned from about 5000 BC to 3000 BC. The town of Los Miliers is located on a prominent hillside, surrounded by three fortified walls, each one protecting the houses contained inside. In time, the people added several forts to protect themselves from wild animals and perhaps bandits. Scholars have uncovered more than a hundred collective tombs in a megalith called La Menga. Warners buried clan members with their grave goods, which ranged from weapons to tools and ornaments, and would serve them in the next life. These megalithic chambers or dolmens 
included large upright stones supporting one another or horizontal slabs that formed a roof within the chamber. Some symbolic engravings and outlines of human faces near the entrance likely have some ritual significance. Such symbolic paintings had been done for almost 10,000 years by then and ranged from headless men to totemic animals. Copper Age people in Iberia likely associated such images with the sunlight that penetrated the burial chamber during the summer solstice. The dolmens themselves are an extraordinary feat of construction. How the builders quarried, moved, and lifted these enormous stones as heavy as 180 tons remains a mystery. Such grave sites dotted ancient Europe, with the most famous being Stonehenge in England and Newgrange in Ireland. Los Milliers gradually faded with the onset of the Bronze Age. In 2000 BC, the El Argar civilization arose and replaced Los Milliers. El Argar thrived in complex hilltop settlements across the Iberian Peninsula for centuries. These fortified hilltop settlements dominated the farming communities which dwelled in the fertile valleys below. It stretched across much of southern and western Iberia. El Argar brought the Iberian Peninsula into the Bronze Age, which interconnected the Mediterranean world in a vast network of trade run out of the eastern Mediterranean. Indeed, to the nations of the Bronze Age, trade was a matter of life and death. They used bronze, an alloy of tin and copper, to make everything from farmers' plows to royal swords. El Argar also combined farming with animal husbandry, caring for sheep and pigs alongside cereal raising. Yet, this trade and growing benefited the elites in the hilltop settlements far more than the farmers who lived below doing all the hard work. In the hilltops, the rich dined upon meat, while the poor had bread filled with stone dust from grinding between whetstones. If a poor Iberian reached the age of 40, little remained of his teeth except some stumps from a lifetime of chewing bread with stone dust mixed in the flour. Both Los Milliers and El Argar are believed to be part of the so-called Old Europeans, thought to exist before the Indo-European migrations, which would soon transform Iberia. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.